friends. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before. I'm Erin and for today's video we are going to be doing a subscription box unboxing and I'm super excited about it because I've never been a member of a subscription service before and this one just seems so cool to me. So the subscription box that I sign up for is called Universal Yums. Now I have been watching other videos on YouTube of people trying different snacks from around the world and obviously I'm a fat kid so I like snacks so I was like there's got to be a cool subscription service that you can sign up for that you can get things from all over the world. So I had it narrowed down to two different ones, one being Snack Crate which I didn't sign up for, no particular really reason why they didn't do anything wrong and then the universal yums one so the subscription box that i went with was universal yums and the reason i went with universal yums was because you could get there were three different size boxes you could choose from so their smallest box is called the yum box and that has six plus snacks in it and that one costs 14.99 a month the second box which is the box i got is called the yum yum box and that one has 12 plus snacks in it and that one is $25.99 a month. And then the third one is called the Super Yum Box, and that one has 20 plus snacks in it, and it is $39.99 a month. Now you do get a little bit of a break if you just pay for like a whole year up front. I went month to month, so I'm paying $25.99 a month for it. Part of the other reason I signed up for it is it seems pretty simple. If I don't enjoy it, to cancel it, it's just the click of a button online, so. I know it's a terrible reason to sign up for a box, but I'm all about not having to call somebody to try to cancel a subscription. I'm super excited. Here is the box. And this is August's box. Now, yes, it is September. I didn't get this until August 31st, and that's not because of Universal Yums. That's because of when I signed up for it, which was toward the end of August. I think I signed up August 20th. So it really didn't take long to get here. So this is August box and I think that September's box will ship out like around September 15th or something. So the first two box videos that I have are gonna be kind of close together. But again, had nothing to do with Universal Yums. It was when I signed up for the service. Anyway, I did cheat a little bit and went on Instagram to see what, <laughs> what country this month's box was from and it is from I think it says the UK but I don't I don't really know how the UK works I thought the UK was like England and Scotland and some other places I could be wrong don't hate me people from the UK but anyway the box I have noticed from watching other videos and looking at stuff the box typically has the flag um, from the country that comes and where it says so it says here, these universal yums traveled all the way from Dear Old Blighty. So I'm assuming that that is a nickname for the United Kingdom. But anyway, let's open up this box and see what's inside. So right off the bat, this is what this looks like. So I am super excited for this. Now, let's see what snacks are in here. This comes off. So it has some games and stuff on this side of this. I'm not going to look at what's in here because I want it to be a surprise. I have stayed off of, I will say if you follow them on Instagram, stay off of there if you want what's in the box to be a surprise because they do pop pictures of what's going to be in there. And I was right. So apparently the UK is made up of England, Northern Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, which are my people. I am Irish and Welsh, among other things. But anyway, and then it has some little games and stuff. And then apparently you can fill out this ballot and you could win some stuff from Universal Yum. Oh, this is just so cool. It also comes with a booklet and I'm assuming, yeah, the booklet tells you what each thing is in here and it has like little stories and stuff about what each thing is. So we'll go through that. And there's a lot of stuff in this box, so I'm really excited to try it. And so let's jump into it. All right, let's grab the first thing. These look like they are chips, and they are by Mackey's of Scotland, and they are mature cheddar and onion. Sounds right up my alley. Here's what it says in the book about it. It says, 
Mackey's mature cheddar and onion chips, cheese and onion potato chips. Take a moment to soak in the bold aroma of these chips because you're experiencing a defining smell of the UK. The intense scent of cheese and onion permeates throughout the nation, lingering on bus floors, bar stools, and cafeteria tables. That's because cheese and onion is the most popular crisp flavor in the UK, as well as the snack choice of chip-loving locals. First introduced in 1962, the bold flavor has since beat out plain, salt and vinegar, and paprika, becoming the most distinctive part of British snacking. Bursting with aged cheddar smokiness and a powerful onion zing, these famous chips are guaranteed to linger on your breath for some time, and even longer on your mind. What I like about this too is they put in all the ingredients, so if you have a food allergy of some sort, you can look and see what's in the ingredients. But anyway, let's try these out. Excited about these. I like cheddar and sour cream chips, and I like sour cream and onion chips, so I'm sure I'll like this. Ooh, they smell good. Let's try them. They look a little different than potato chips from here. They're a little bit thicker. But they look like they'll be good. Let's see. Mm. These are really good. I can see why they would quickly become like a favorite. They're so good, I'm going to eat another one before I move on. So good. Really good. Let's move on to the next one. It does look like there's a lot of chips in here, so I will warn you about that. I guess we'll carry on with the chip theme. These are Johnny's Pickled Onion Rings crying out with flavor. No MSG vegetarian, blah, blah, And they're only 20 pence. I think it's so cool when they have like other things. Oh. In case you were wondering, here's what the other bag of chips look like. From here is what Johnny's pickled onion rings look like. A fun package. Let's see what it says in the book about these. Johnny's Pickled Onion Rings, Pickled Onion Corn Snack. You won't find peanuts at bars in the UK. The pub tables are adorned with something different, pickled onions. Small pearl onions soaked in salt, sugar, and vinegar have long been a British pub tradition. If they're not being scooped straight from the jar, they're being served as part of the plowman's lunch, a popular British pub platter consisting of cheese, ham, bread, and pickled veggies. Never try pickled onions? Fair warning, these guys, these little guys pack a seriously shocking punch. And that flavor is perfectly captured with these pungent pickled onion rings. With their strong oniony zest and vibrant tang, you'll be left wondering what just hit you and where you can get more. Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about these. I don't know how I feel about pickled onions. But, guess we'll find out. Home from here. Oh man. They smell like salt and vinegar chips to me. I'm a little scared. They're little, they're not that big. Oh, I don't know if I can do it. Alright, there goes nothing. I thought that was going to be a lot more like in your face vinegary, but they're not. They're definitely a cross between Funyuns and salt and vinegar chips, which I like salt and vinegar chips, so no biggie to me. They're different though. I don't like these as much as I like the other ones, but they're pretty good. Let's move away from something chippy to something sweet. They put all the little candies you get in this bag. So open this up and see what we have in here. We have these little guys here. They're pink and white. And some of these are hard candy, so those probably won't eat the whole thing, obviously. This looks like it's probably chewy. This is what it looks like. Let's find out what this is. These are called Kerr Royal Chews. 
black currant and champagne flavored candies. Contains no alcohol. Cheers. This colorful candy is made to taste like Cair Royal, a French cocktail containing champagne and black currant liquor. Why does it belong in the UK box, you ask? Because of the quintessential British ingredient, black currant. This tiny, deep purple berry is one of UK's most popular fruits, and it's used heavily throughout their cuisine and also exported to other European countries to mix in their drinks. As prevalent as black currant is in Europe, an astonishing 99% of Americans have never tried it. Hi, that's me. Unless you're a Universal Yums customer. We had it in our Pakistan box last year. For the uninitiated, black currant is a small fruit similar to a blueberry, but much more tart and far less sweet. Because of that, black currant is used mainly for baking and cooking rather than eating raw. We like the other use too, making them into these ridiculously tasty candies. Let's see how these are. It smells fruity-ish. I still have that pickled onion scent on my fingers though. Mmm. That is really good. I made a laffy taffy. Those are really good. Good. I still have two more. I'm hiding those. They're so good. It's sweet. It doesn't taste like champagne to me. It's a little bit tart, but not much. I really like that. Now that I'm done chewing, let's try another candy. We'll go with this one here. So these look lighter than the thing in here, and the packaging doesn't look the same. This looks more like a caramel to me. But it says it's um, Prosecco? Prosecco? So let's read about these. It says Prosecco fudge, sparkling wine flavored fudge. Contains no alcohol. There are a few things that everyone knows about Prosecco. It's sweet, it's bubbly, and it's undeniably Italian. Where is it? While the Italian wine company I can't even, I guess it's Carpignier Molvodi, yeah, definitely butchered that, sorry, has laid claim to inventing sparkling Prosecco in 1868. Many in the UK have other ideas. According to them, an English scientist named Christopher Merritt experimented with sparkling wine over 200 years prior, and even before the French made their first champagne. In a 1662 paper addressed to the Royal Society, Merritt documented how to put fizz in wine, describing how English winemakers were currently mixing sugar with wine to add a fresh bubbly quality. So is England the true creator of everyone's favorite celebratory drink? We can't say for sure. Regardless of who actually invented Prosecco, the UK is certainly the first to put it in fudge, and with its soft texture and fragrant flavor, we we'll certainly toast to that. I like Prosecco. I just didn't know how to pronounce it. So I'm sure I will like this. Feels like this is gonna be very chewy. Let's see how it goes. Whoa. Okay. It doesn't taste like fudge to me. It tastes like a combination of caramel and those silly looking pumpkin candies. Not sure how I feel about that. It's a weird consistency for me. Felt like it was going to be really hard and then once I put it in my mouth it was really squishy. And had that weird consistency like candy corn has, which I can't stand candy corn or those little pumpkin things. And it's not that sweet. So I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of that one. It wasn't bad though. All right. Let's move away from candy and go on to something else. We'll finish the candy later. We'll do some more chips. These I'm afraid of. All right, this is more Mackey's of Scotland chips, or potato crisps, rather. This is haggis and cracked black pepper. I know that haggis is like sheep parts. I'm really not sure how I feel about that being in a potato chip. Let me read to you about these chips. I'm really afraid of them. Okay. Mackey's Haggis and Black Pepper Chips Spiced Potato Chips contains no meat. 
If you ask any Scotsman what is haggis, he'll most likely chuckle with it and reply with a small wild animal with two legs shorter than the others so it can run around the mountains without falling over. Never heard of wild haggis? That means you haven't fallen for the trick. Describing haggis this way is something Scotsmen like to do to American tourists rather than reveal the truth. And it works because according to a 2003 survey, one third of American tourists actually thought haggis was a wild animal. So, now comes the inevitable question. What is haggis really? The national dish of Scotland, it's a pudding made from a mixture of sheep's pluck, heart, liver, and lungs. Onions, grains, and spices, and then boiled in an animal stomach. Okay, we admit, that might not sound immediately appealing. That's probably why the wild animal joke came about in the first place. But the famous pudding is surprisingly delicious, especially when served traditionally with taties and neeps, mashed potatoes, and root vegetables. With these haggis flavored potato chips, you'll get to taste the entire meat and potatoes rolled into one country snack. Feel a bit unsure? Don't worry, there's no meat in these, sheep or otherwise. Just a unique, full-bodied flavor of Scotland's national dish. Trust us, this is no joking matter. I am so afraid to try these chips. But, sometimes we have to be brave. Oh, this is what the bag looks like. Looks foreboding to me. I don't know about you. I smell kind of like barbecue chips. <laughs> I'm so afraid. I am so afraid. Alright. There goes nothing. Oh. Not a fan. They're okay. They're not as bad as I thought they were gonna be. There's like a very, very smoky flavor and meaty flavor, which is just weird for me for potato chips. I don't know, I'm not a fan. Hopefully my boyfriend will like these. They don't go to waste, but definitely different. Oof. And the, the flavor stays in your mouth. Uh, ooh. I think I need to go back to trying something sweet. Let's try that and wash that down more. Another one of these candies. Here's what this looks like, the little yellow candy. And these are called Stockley's Chocolate Limes. Lime candies filled with chocolate. Chocolate with limes? No wonder the United States wanted independence from Britain. Who thinks of such a thing? It might sound odd, but this sweet and zingy combination is an English candy classic. First made popular in the 1980s, these old-fashioned boiled sweets, called appropriately chocolate limes, have remained one of the country's most popular treats. A lime-flavored hard shell encases a smooth cocoa center, bringing the unique candies a mouth-wandering fusion of nutty richness and fresh tang. So what are you waiting for? Pop one into your mouth and taste for yourself what you're subjected to if we were still under the kingdom's rule. Let's try this out. Can't taste any worse than those haggis potato chips. Ooh. Definitely limey. Obviously we'll be editing this because I want to get through this hard candy. So I can give it a chocolate part and let you know what that tastes like. So, please hold. I'm back. I've made it to the chocolatey center. Well, I'm in chocolate. Not that bad. I actually really like it. So, give this one a thumbs up. All right, let's move on to the last bag of chips that's in here. Because I think I like these. So these again are Mackies of Scotland. These are ridge cut salt, sea salt and cider vinegar flavored potato chips. I'm excited about these. This is what the bag looks like. Now I'm a fan of salt and vinegar chips anyway, which I know some people are not. So I think I'll like these. Let's see what the book has to say about these. 
Mackey sea salt and cider vinegar chips. Salt and vinegar potato chips. Fish and chips. As the UK's most famous dish, it would be improper to visit without trying it. But is it the national dish? You'll find out in our trivia answers. There are over 8,500 fish and chip shops across the UK, one for every eight McDonald's, all specializing in the tasty combo. Traditionally, the dish is prepared by taking fresh white fish, coating it in a light batter, frying it, and placing it atop thick cut fries. Then the entire plate is doused in salt, dressed in, drenched in tangy vinegar, and wrapped in crinkled newspaper. While well, we can't bring you a plate of fresh fish and chips with salt and vinegar, we can bring you the next best thing, Mackey's Sea Salt and Cider Vinegar Potato Chips. Made with the same vinegar used in fish and chip shops in the UK, packed with a zingy tang, these crisp, these crispy yums are a real catch. Let's give these a try. Definitely smell like home vinegar chips. Look like a regular potato chip. But I like potato crisps better. It sounds better to me. Try this out. Ooh, different. These are not as tangy as like salt and vinegar chips that you get from here, and I'm sure that's because it's cider vinegar. They're definitely not that salty, but I really like these. They're different. And I've had fish and chips before, so, but I think I had malt vinegar on them, not cider vinegar. But this is really good. Definitely the eating these later. Let's do our last candy and get that over with. Okie doke. So this last candy is treacle toffee. Just a little toffee. And here's what it say about, says about this. Walker's non such treacle toffee. Chewy toffees with treacle. I don't, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. And I don't know what it is, but let's find out. They might look like your ordinary candies, but there's much more to these yums than meets the eye. The English toffee is packed with treacle, a, soft, a sweet golden liquid similar to molasses that's supposedly created as a result of the sugar refinement process. But there's a rumor that England is protecting the real truth about treacle, that it's naturally mined there underground. Scandalous. As the story goes, a 13-year-old boy discovered the syrup in the 18th century in a cave on Treat Cliff. He and his family began selling the liquid, which they called treacle, to surrounding villages where it quickly gained popularity. One day, the boy overheard several wealthy businessmen plotting to take over and commercialize his treacle mine. To protect the natural wonder, the boy and his family agreed to fill the cave with dirt until the businessmen had dried up. After that, it is said the locals developed an artificial version of treacle, passing off their precious treat cliff treacle as only a myth. While there's plenty of mystery surrounding England's Luscious gold syrup. When it comes to this treacle toffee, there's no secret. It's delicious. Let's find out if the treacle trickle, I don't know how you say this, is any good. Toffee sticks to my teeth. This is gonna stick to my teeth. <laughs> Smells like toffee. Oh. Please hold while I chew. Five hours later. Mm. There's the treacle. Okay, tastes like toffee with some more sweetness in it for sure. They're good. I like toffee, so I don't really like how it sticks in my teeth, but it wasn't haggis, so we're good. All right, let's move on to the next thing. We'll do these fun looking cookie dealies. These are Melt in the Mouth, Baked by Hand, Dean's Original Family Recipe, Light and Crumbly Chocolate Chip Shortbread Mini Bites. Sounds up my alley to me. Here's what it looks like. Let's see what this has to say. Dean's of Huntley shortbread, chocolate chip butter shortbread. Prepare yourself. These shortbread cookies are about as short as it gets. We're not talking about their cute mini shape. You see, when it comes to baked goods, the word short means crumbly, which is a texture that can only be achieved with large amounts of fat. That's why the fat added to pastries is called shortening. The more you know. Scottish shortbread is widely regarded as some of the best in the world, incorporating incorporating high percentages of butter for that perfect melt-in-your-mouth short texture. Their traditional Scottish shortbread is made from a premium butter recipe with a sprinkling of rich chocolate chips for one seriously addictive masterpiece. Come to think of it, 
There's only one other thing that's short about these cookies, the time it will take to devour them. Oh, these are packaged so cute. So they came packaged like this. They are little. Let's see if I can grab one out of here. Let's give it a try. Mm. So those were good. Shortbread with chocolate chips in them. Can't go wrong there. I like that. Let's move on. We'll do this next. This is a taste of for adventure wagon wheels jammy. Cute packaging. This is what it looks like. Let's see what this says. Wagon wheels jammy chocolate covered marshmallow cookies with raspberry jam. When you eat one of these cookies, you're joining 350,000 other people who will eat them today. As one of the UK's most famous treats, over 125 million of these cookies are eaten every year. Why the obsession? That's not even a question once you've had a bite. The wildly popular treats have it all. Gooey marshmallow fluff, a dollop of raspberry jam, two crumbly cookies, and a layer of creamy milk chocolate. If you've always thought s'mores were the ultimate marshmallow treat, get ready and have your mind blown. This UK favorite is crunchy, fluffy, fruity, chocolatey snack we've never knew we were missing. Excited to try this. We'll demolish the packaging on that one. Let's see. pretty good. It broke apart more than I thought it would. Reminds me a little bit of a moon pie but with crunch in it as opposed to fluff. Definitely good. Thumbs up. Okay. Next we are going to do this dreamy creamy toffee. This is whack and then unwrap and enjoy. Just good ingredients. Here's what it looks like. Walkers, none such. Dreamy, creamy. English toffee bar. Ahem. Sit up straight, brush off your clothes, and put on your best smile. Because we will now introduce you to the Queen of England. Or at least the Queen's favorite toffee. Made by one of England's most renowned toffee companies, Walkers, none such. This famous buttery treat dates all the way back to the 1800s. Founder Edward Joseph Walker began making toffee in a small candy shop in Stoke-on-Trent, Longton. His shop quickly became a hit amongst locals for his unique slab toffee, which needed to be broken into pieces with a special hammer. Today, Walker's traditional toffee is still made using the same family recipe. Milk, butter, and molasses are heated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and then formed into solid blocks. Just like in the tiny shop, this toffee bar is meant to be whacked to break it into pieces. Not to worry though, as this yum isn't overly hard and brittle like most toffees. Just firm enough to crack, yet creamy enough to melt in your mouth. So do as the queen must do when she eats the toffee and get whacking. All right, let's try this. I don't know what you whack this with. It seems pretty soft to me. So maybe I can just break it and still whack it. That's pretty nice. Now I know what they mean by whack it. I'm just gonna try to take a bite of this. Oh, so cute. Mm. And this kid is why it follow directions. Next time I'll hit it with a hammer. It's good though. It's really good. I like coffee. All right, down to the last two things. These are Bristow's Chewy Bonbons, Rhubarb and Custard. This is what the packaging looks like. Let's have a little read, shall we? Bristow's of Devon Rhubarb and Custard Bonbons. Rhubarb and Custard Chewy Candies. Rhubarb. In the U.S., we only hear about this vegetable when it's baked into strawberry and rhubarb pie. Side note, whoa, who knew it was a vegetable? Not this person here. In the UK, the long pink celery-like stalks are everywhere, bringing a unique flavor to sweet and savory dishes alike. So what exactly does this vegetable taste like? Well, it's tough to describe. If we had to compare, we'd say it has the tartness of a berry plus a refreshing crunch of celery. But hey, don't listen to us. You can decide for yourself with these rhubarb and custard bonbons in this UK classic. The freshness of rhubarb is balanced perfectly by the richness and sweet custard for a uniquely flavorful treat. If more vegetables were like rhubarb, we'd have no problem getting our daily dose of greens. 
give these a go. If I was an intelligent person, rather than rip this open and destroy the packaging like I did with that wagon wheel, I would use my handy dandy scissors. This is what they look like. They don't really have a smell to them. Oh, they're chewy. Okay. These aren't bad. Once you get chewing on them, they're pretty good. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. I really like that. All right, last thing. These are called Toffee Pops. People in the UK sure do like their toffee. Toffee filled biscuit with chocolate flavor coating. This is what the packaging looks like. Stop before you even think about tearing into these cookies and you need to get up, walk into your kitchen and turn on the tea kettle. You see, in the UK, these famous biscuits are almost exclusively enjoyed with a cup of freshly brewed tea. So if you want the full experience and trust us it's worth it, we suggest preparing the perfect cup of tea. What's tricky is that the perfect cup of tea can mean several different things in the UK. In Northern Ireland, people prefer their tea bold and dark, while tea drinkers in Scotland and Northeast England prefer subtler flavor with milk. According to locals, you should stew a tea bag for just 48 seconds for the lightest flavor, 57 seconds for medium flavor, and 64 seconds for the strongest flavor, adding chilled milk after, according to your preference. Once your cup of tea is ready, go ahead and crack open your toffee pops. Be sure to wash down every decadent bite with a sip of tea, perfectly created to your liking. That perfect cup of tea with the perfect tea cookie, it doesn't get better than that. Well, we have no milk in our house. We do have tea. But I'm just gonna try it without the tea. And then I'll try it with the tea later. See how that goes. Go ahead and give these a go. Oh man. It looks like these kind of melted together on their journey to North Carolina. But here's a part of a cookie, so we'll try that. That is so good. That is so, so good. I'm trying to think of what cookie in the United States that remind me of. I kind of like the Keebler shortbread cookies that have the chocolate on them, but better. Anyway, this is by far my favorite thing out of the box, so I'm glad I saved it for last. I can see how these would be good with tea. However, they're fine without tea too. All right, that's everything that's in my yum yum box. I really like this box, so I'm glad I signed up for it. I think it's neat to get things from all over the world to try. And on the back, it has a clue for what next month's box is gonna be. So, let's read and see what it says. Next month, we're putting on smiles and hopping on boats to a place filled with temples and markets that float. There will be lemongrass soup and hot spicy curry, so stand by your mailbox and say, mailman, please hurry. If we're going with temples and boats and lemongrass soup and curry, I'm thinking someplace in Indonesia, which frightens me, not gonna lie, because I'm sure that this was a mild box to start out with, but I can't get, wait to get it and try out the different stuff expand my taste buds. That's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. If you want to see the next month's video with next month's box, make sure you subscribe so you'll see it when I post it as well as my other videos. To those who have already subscribed, thank you so so much. I appreciate it more than you'll ever know and I will catch you guys next time. Bye!